Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Had it the opera on you, Norgas. Now, black NFL coaches perform about as well as white coaches, but face hurdles to getting and holding the job. Washington Post finds this out. Now, Gregory Bull from the AP, an end racism sign, is shown on the goalposts during the NFL game on September 11th. Black NFL head coaches regularly perform about as well as white NFL head coaches, yet they face significant hurdles to getting and keeping their job. Black NFL head coaches regularly perform about as well as white NFL head coaches, yet face significant hurdles to getting and keeping their jobs, according to a Washington Post analysis published Wednesday. Titled, How the NFL Blocks Black Coaches, the in-depth story examines the short history of black NFL coaches, dating to when Art Shell was hired by the Los Angeles Raiders in 1989 as the first black head coach in modern history. Since then, there have been 191 people hired as head coaches, yet just 24 have been black, a glaring shortcoming for a league in which a majority of the players are black, the Post notes. This season, there are three black head coaches, Todd Bowles of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Lovey Smith of the Houston Texas and Texans, and Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is the same number of black head coaches as in 2003 when the NFL, facing pressure for its lack of representation, introduced a new policy known as the Rooney Rule, requiring teams to interview at least one candidate of color for head coach and front office jobs. The Rooney Rule was recently updated in part to require teams to interview at least two external minority candidates for open head coach positions. The Post interviewed 16 of the 24 black coaches and features three decades worth of data analysis, graphs, videos, and more explaining the hurdles black coaches face. It seems like the criteria moves. Leslie Frazier, former head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, who was fired a year after taking the team to the playoffs and is now the defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills, told the Post, one week or one year, it's we want an offensive-minded guy. Another year, we want a guy with a Super Bowl-winning background. What's the criteria? Sometimes it's because he's a great leader. Sometimes it's because he came up the same way I came up. But the common theme is an owner is going to hire someone that looks like that owner. The issue was highlighted in February when Brian Flores, the former Miami Dolphins head coach, filed a lawsuit against the NFL and three teams alleging racial discrimination. Flores, who is black, said in his lawsuit that the New York Giants and Denver Broncos interviewed him for their vacant head coaching job under dis disingenuous circumstances to be in compliance with the Rooney Rule. Former Arizona Cardinals head coach Steve Wilkes and longtime NFL assistant Ray Horton joined Flores' lawsuit in April, similarly alleging discriminatory conduct. <clears throat> Excuse me. The NFL called the allegations in the lawsuit meritless. The NFL and our clubs are deeply committed to ensuring equitable employment practices and continue to make progress in providing equitable opportunities throughout our organizations. The league said in a statement, Diversity is core to everything we do, and there are few issues on which our clubs and our eternal leadership teams spend more time. The Dolphins, Broncos, and Giants have also denied wrongdoing. In response to the lawsuit, the NFL and teams have filed a motion to move the case to arbitration and stay further court proceedings, according to court documents. What holds black coaches back? In response to the Post's findings, Troy Vincent, the NFL's executive vice president of the football operations, told the Post, at the end of the day, we don't make the hires. We've exhausted ourselves with programs, initiatives, making sure that owners are aware of who's out there as candidates. But we don't make the hire. 
And so it's been a difficult challenge for us, but we've got to keep pushing. And we believe that what we're doing is the right thing until hearts change, he said. The Post story identified several key issues black coaches are forced to tackle. It focuses on the shortcomings of the Rooney Rule and highlights comments from black coaches who say they were given sham interviews so that teams comply with the rule. In addition, teams have increasingly hired coaches who previously served as offensive coordinator or quarterbacks coach yet from 99 to 2021. 86% of the offensive quarterback jobs were filled by white coaches. I mean, offensive quarterback jobs were filled by white coaches. The Post writes, Black coaches also languished in assistants and position coaches before becoming head coaches. The black men who became NFL head coaches in the past decade on average has spent more than nine years longer than their white counterparts in mid-level assistant jobs and three years fewer as coordinators, the paper reports. Finally, even when they are hired, they are held to a higher standard and winning does not necessarily save them, the Post wrote. Since 1990, a black head coach who wins at least nine games and a white coach who wins at least six have roughly the same chance of being fired, the analysis found. CNN has reached out to the NFL for comment. So, now do y'all believe all I'm saying is this is BS? So, now do y'all believe me? When I told y'all that racism and prejudice is happening, and that is why I keep telling the black players, the black athletes all around, to stop playing sports. If you guys boycott playing in the foot playing football and you boycott playing basketball, we will have a lot of changes as far as putting owners in the spot that need to be there. You know, whites don't care about this. Whites are just dismissive saying, oh, well, everything you saying doesn't doesn't have nothing to do with, you know, racism or prejudice. Yeah, it does. Go to any Fortune 500 company. How many blacks do you see? at those high positions in the boardroom huh how many blacks you see in congress how many blacks you see sitting at the table when they have meetings when the president have meeting with the generals and colonels you probably get like one maybe two out of the 15 or 20 people that's in the damn room <laughs> And it, this is what's been going on with the NFL forever. Now, I'm not saying every black coach can coach. There are black coaches who cannot coach a lick, but they're good as defensive coordinators and they're good as offensive coordinators. They just don't have that charisma or that fire or exuberance to be a head coach. All I'm saying is give a fair shot. To me, I feel like, and this is a suggestion I have made, they need to take the, the, um, the the um the where it says race your ethnicity they need to take that off of the resume seriously they need to take that off the resume because then owners and people will have a chance to actually test out who's more qualified because that coach that's down in miami that mofo is not is not qualified at all to have a head coaching job i don't care what anybody says you can say oh he started off two and oh yeah because that is Brian Flores players and his team every time the brother man builds the foundation he builds the foundation up they just come in and reap the benefits say a Tony Dungy remember Dungy what they did to him in Tampa and then that coon Warren Sapp and coon Derek Brooks ain't stand up for him you know it is what it is that's what I'm saying and a lot of the NFL players like that's black players they're a lot of Sambos they're Sambos. So I don't respect none of these football players or basketball players because they should have formed their own league a long time ago. They should have boycotted basketball and football until they got a CBA done. Well, in NFL, they should have they should have um they should have boycotted, you know, until and, and got the CBA done until they get fully guaranteed contracts plus they should have had health benefits given to them. But no, they're too busy wanting to take time off and smoke marijuana instead of handling their business. But athletes all around the sport, if black athletes, the real blacks, not the fake blacks from overseas, if they were to just leave like all these sports, baseball, basketball, football, you know, all the sports, soccer, the league would be trash. 
and these owners would take a big hit. And this is the this is the facts. Now I'm not saying that white coaches shouldn't get a job. If the white guy is, you know, if he's up for the job, if he has the resume and the merits to um get a job, give him a job. In my opinion, I don't care whether you black, white, Asian, or Spanish, whatever you are. If you could do the goddamn job, you're going to be put in position to do your job. But if you're just hiring these coaches based off of their skin tone, that is not good enough to me. And if you're going after an owner, they had a chance to go after a owner. But no, in Denver, they gave it to the Walton family, the, the founders of Walmart. Why didn't you give that job to a black owner? But yet you preach diversity, you preach equality equal opportunity which you really don't the only thing you do is you just want the players to be black playing on the field hell we just now got a league with black quarterbacks at least we got i think 10 or 11 in the league now that are black quarterbacks usually we would only have three or four and they're still making it hard for us to get the quarterback position they're trying their best to kick us out we can't even take a backup job but yet Blaine Gabbard and Joe Flacco can be backups, but Cam Newton can't get a job. And then everybody going to come, well, he played terrible. Well, you guys are saying the, the, the offensive line for the Patriots is terrible. They were terrible when Cam was there, too. You, you guys just didn't want to believe it. And you had Josh McDaniels not adjusting to Cam. He's trying to make Cam play his way instead of letting Cam be Cam. And that's why the Patriots are going to forever be hurting because after what they did to Brady, which is Belichick, and what they're doing, they're getting exposed. And we're going to see. I mean, they might win today against the Ravens, but that doesn't matter. Down the line, you're going to have to win Super Bowls. And I don't believe they have the quarterback to take them there. But I'm just saying, when you're hiring for a job, it should be based off your experience. It should be based off of your work ethic and your merits. But a lot of these coaches being hired, they're trash. Look at Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen got a job in New Orleans, and as a head coach, he was trash. He was terrible. But yet, he gets a coaching job. <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous how they treat these coaches, how they continue to, to, to move the goalposts just to save face. And like I said, the NFL ain't shit. So... Thank you for listening. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. If you guys love what you hear, you can donate to the page by going to my description box. Hitting that link that will take you to my cash app and you could donate whatever your heart's desire. Um, if you, um, when we have a live video or a um, premiere video, you know, you guys can super chat. And if you're um, not able to super chat, you can leave a super thanks, which is like a super chat, which is after the video has come to its um, completion. So thank you guys, man, for your support, your love, and um, your blessings. And we're out. DZ.